Hey, welcome to another video. Today we're going to be doing a medium to advanced level topic. We're going to be discussing how to create your own module loader. And this is big for creating your own framework and helping to define a scripting style that you'll use repeatedly. And this is helpful when you start new projects and as you want to rapidly create new ideas, you can use the same fundamental uh, underbelly to rapidly create new ideas. So if we look over in Studio, I have a little uh, structure already set up. I have the server script. And uh, this tutorial uh, assumes that you already have a basic understanding of module scripts. So here in the server script, we have a quick require for the module loader. And then it edits the children of the script and it starts it. Uh, pretty simple. And the client is the same exact thing. And then under this, we have a test module with a start method. And we also have a client module with a start method. Very simple. The idea is that with our loader, what we're going to want to, uh, the goal is that as we add more modules, they're going to automatically be loaded. And this start method is going to be ran. So we can quickly expand and add more to our game uh, and put it all under this shell to all work together. So we're going to go into our module loader here, and I've already wrote a couple lines of code, but this is just an empty shell, and we're going to fill it in together. Module loader is the name of our module, and uh, cache modules is what we're going to use to store all the loaded modules that our server and client will load with the init method. Get is going to return a module that's been cached. Init will add all the modules from our scripts here uh, to the cached modules. And then start is going to call that start method on all of the cached modules. An additional line I have down here is adding the get function to the shared. So we don't have to require the replicated storage every time we want to access this module loader. So we're going to start simply by returning cache modules name. That's a simple one. Uh, that just returns a module that we already have loaded. And then now we're going to start by uh, initializing a list of loaded modules. So we're going to say, okay, it's that simple. All we do is iterate over our module scripts and we add the name of the module script as the key in our cached modules and the loaded module as the value. So this will create a table of loaded module scripts, which we can access from other module scripts. And our start method, there we go. And we've created our module loader. It's that simple. And with the code I've already outlined, what we should see is that test module dot start will print started test module if we just run this game as a server. As we can see down here in the corner, started test module. So our module loader is already up and running. And it's that simple. And let's say we had a second module here. Our first module has some method that we want to use. Our print method. So from our second module, we can define get as share.get, and we can say test module, and this should get renamed to the second module. So what I've quickly set up here is that the second module will print started test module two, and then it will call the print method of the test module that we just defined using the get method that we've defined under shared. And as we can see down in the output, and I'll move this down here so we can see it better. We can see that we've started test module, started test module two, and from test module, we're saying hello from test from the second module. 
This is a very simple and very basic way to create an interconnected system that you can quickly add and rapidly expand and you won't have to write too much additional code for how to integrate your new modules into your pre-existing system. And so as we create many, many more modules, they're automatically ran and they're automatically loaded. One caveat though from this design is that you can only call other modules after they've all been initialized. Because as we loop through the scripts that we pass into our module loader, test module, second module, say that test module has a call for second module, uh, just out here, it's, you know, get second module. If we have a call for second module in test module, but second module is not loaded, we're not going to get second module. And second module, we can't perform any operations with that. So the point of this is that it comes in two stages. We have an init stage, which uh, loads all our modules into a cached module, then our start method, which uh, runs this start function on all the modules. And once we run that start function, we also know that all the modules have been loaded and they're safe to use. Something else that I like to do additionally is maybe add a folder for utilities. That's a way that we could expand this and we could add a module script under here for, you know, uh, let's say it's a model utility or uh, other utilities like that, that we might use frequently in other projects. We can put it all under our loader as a utility and we could add a method in our loader to get that utility. Further expansion as well. Perhaps we want to make sure that we can always have our loader in all our projects. Something we can do is turn it into a package. If we click this convert to package button, we can call it module loader and I'll set the ownership to myself. This module loader will now have this package icon. It's very small to see, but it's under there. And this means that it is an asset that is stored on the cloud. And as you add things to it, let's say we add, see now here it's saying that we need to publish our changes if we want to edit this package. So let's say we add a number utility of some sort. Uh, this little uh, exclamation point indicates that we've made a change to our package. So we're going to publish our changes to our package. Now, if we open up a new place, we can go into our toolbox, go to my packages, and we can insert our module loader here. And this module loader will be up to date with all of the other packages. This is important because as you maintain and update your module loader, you're going to be adding more things to it. So we want to make sure that we always have the most recent version and that we're always working with the same concept. We don't want to rewrite the same thing every time. So beyond that, what else could we add to our module loader? Well, perhaps we could add a component system, which takes tagged items and instantiates them as classes. We could add, um, we could add a testing utility. We could add a test subfolder. We could add logging for printing messages to the console. We could add utilities for, uh, you know, uh, maybe you have an admin tool set that you've created. You could put that under your module loader as a utility and package it all together so that you have access to it in all your other games. And that's how you create your own module loader. Uh, if you enjoyed this tutorial, leave a thumbs up. Leave any comments down below if you want me to talk about anything else or if you had any comments or questions in this video. Thanks, guys. Have a good day.